see, how did we get involved in the film? We met with Rob and John. Uh, we had many and meetings. And begged. And begged. Yes, and begged endlessly yeah. for a few months. <laughs> and, and finally they called and said, which Sherman brother would you like to be? <laughs> There was certainly a lot of pressure, and it continues to be a lot of pressure on the fact that we know that we'll be compared to the first movie, which is one of the great movies and certainly one of the greatest song scores ever written yeah. for an original film. Not but to we, mention the fact that that Mary hasn't sung in 54 years, so <laughs> there's that pressure too. We, we tried to turn our fear into our love for the first movie and figured out it was a way to write a love letter to it. And that was how we were able to then jump on it, you know, and, and be excited about the pressure. And that we, it was an honor for us to get be chosen to do it. The, underneath, underneath the, the lovely, lovely London, London sky, sky was the first course, song. was the first song we wrote. <laughs> but it's relevant today because I think we're all been missing in this cynical time that this part of our hearts and I think that this movie touches on that it's, it, it's important as I said I always say Mary Poppins shows up when you need her the most and boy do we need her now so well it tells the story the music tells the story in a Mary Poppins movie doesn't it yeah. um, I hope that they're moved and delighted and uplifted and taken out of this abysmal situation that we're currently in. I mean, it's an escape. It's two hours of escape and a reminder that life can be joyful. And uh, yeah. Michael is 20 odd years older than he was, maybe more. And um, he's not in a very good way. He's struggling with lots of things. He's lost his wife and he has three children and he's struggling with money and he's about to lose the family home so he's under a lot of pressure and he's not coping very well to be honest i can't think of a time when there wouldn't be a uh, it wouldn't be appropriate to be frank but i think now more than ever innocence you know innocence in the heart delight in life joy of being here i think that's what the film's about um, being with the people you love. It's the thing that celebrates that in a very uncynical way and I think that's sometimes very needed. Yes, I mean, I, yeah, I think families are strange things, you know, they're not... Um, and family dynamics are, are not always what we suspect they are. But um, that, yeah, I think it, it celebrates emotional openness, honesty, tenderness with people. Um, your family and others, yeah. Um, I was completely obsessed with the film. Um, I, I, I couldn't believe when I first saw it what I was watching. I didn't know what was happening to me. It was, so it, it was everything. When it's a, such an enormous part of my childhood. Well, yeah, I mean, there's events and then there's one with this sort of intent, which is basically to delight kids, you know, and I think, it's, it's, it's festive and seasonal. Love being here at the Arbor Hall. Never done that before, you know, for a, for a film premiere. Uh, I'm almost the same age as the. I'm actually I'm older than the film, but it's definitely it was something I grew up with. Um, it had that magic. It's part of my early childhood sort of dream world, really. And uh, so this is like walking through, into the through looking glass. Not yeah, no, I play a misunderstood um, banker who just wants to get by and earn a few bucks. Well, it was wonderful. I mean, the fact they were really nice people. Um, I don't think I've been, I think we're all going to say this, but I don't think anyone's been so starstruck as, as we all were with uh, Dick Van Dyke. Uh, it's one thing to meet him, it's another thing for him to be a very lovely guy. But also in a Mary Poppins context, it, it, was, uh, it really was like stepping into a story. Unbelievable. This, this whole uh, experience is, is bigger than anything I've ever witnessed and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Well, Rob Marshall invited me to uh, come over and talk to him about the possibility of making it, and so I met him uh, and uh, uh, John DeLuca, the producer, and within 15, 20 minutes of talking together, it just felt right. I felt like we were talking the same about the same film that we loved and the same film we wanted to make. So, The uh, biggest challenge for us was to find a reason for Mary Poppins to come back 
uh, it had to be a good one. And, and uh, it was only when we realized that uh, uh, if we set the film during the Depression, which was when the original books were written, we could have uh, Jane and Michael Banks return as grown-ups. And grown-ups forget a lot about that magic that they experience when they're young, and they've forgotten for various reasons what it was like to be that age. And it's time for Mary to come back and help them remember some of that magic that they've lost. I worked with Mark and Scott constantly, and it was a, it was really a, a, a wonderful process. I'd never written a musical before, but they've written many, and so I trusted them. We we, we created the story together, five of us: Mark, John, uh, Rob, and Scott, uh, all sitting around talking about the story we wanted to create. And they would get to a point where they'd say, "I think that's a song," and then it was my job just to kind of write what I thought was happening during that song. But I trusted that they knew their part of things, and I focused on the story. I gotta say, Trip a Little Light Fantastic is absolutely overwhelming. It's such an exciting uh, song, dance number, uh, it pulls out all the stops. It was an amazing experience to watch and, and to see here now. I think that it comes along at a time in, in our uh, lives when all of us can, uh, can use being reminded about joy and hope and uh, getting through uh, troubled times. Uh, really, that's the message that Mary Poppins brings for the first time and when she returns. And, uh, and so uh, I think most everyone who sees it leaves with a smile on their face. Unbelievable, unbelievable. The, uh, the cast is more than you could have dreamed uh, of having. And of course, it's because uh, Rob Marshall uh, is so respected for his work in musicals. And because then when Emily Blunt joins in and Lynn manuel Miranda does, suddenly Meryl Streep does too. And then the list goes on and on and on. I mean, the, the cast, Ben Wishaw, Emily Mortimer, uh, fantastic. Uh, Everett Colin Firth, I mean, you, you can go pretty deep in that roster without, without anyone, with, with everyone knowing every name and, and loving their work. So it, it's an incredibly, uh, incredible opportunity. I think watching them rehearse it and put it together and having that moment where you think, this is going to work. This is it. This is really going to work. Before all the lights and the, the sets and the costumes and all of them are fantastic, to see that everyone is making the same story and understands it is a tremendous feeling. It was overwhelming. I mean, it's really spectacular to be back here and showing it to the British audience because it was made here and made here with great love and it is such a love letter to London. And you see not only the incredible, you know, sights there, but we've got a predominantly British cast. And so it, it, it is wonderful, especially in this setting. It's like, oh my God, in the Royal Albert Hall, it just doesn't really get much better. Well, I think it was important for me that even though I was aware of how iconic the territory was, that I had to carve out new space for myself. And I dove into the books. The books, she's quite different, you know. It's like, wow, it's a, what do you call it? A sense overload or something. Uh, so Jane is the, you know, little girl that we know from the original movie, now, now grown up, and she's an activist like her mother. Um, she works for the poor and the dispossessed and the unemployed in, in the Depression era when the movie set in the 1930s. And she devotes herself to loving people, I think, and, and never thinking that she uh, deserves or needs love back herself particularly. She, she loves the people that she, that she works for. She loves the, um, her family, her brother and her, her nieces and nephews. But she's rather given up on romantic love or, 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 or being loved in return by a, by a guy. And then Mary Poppins comes along and sort of opens her eyes. Well, it's, it's like medicine. It's like an antidote to the confusion of life. And particularly this moment in the world feels particularly painful and odd. And, um, and I think Mary Poppins is like, you know, the, the new one is, is, is like the spoonful of sugar in the first one. You know, it helps the medicine go down and it is medicine and, and it's just going to make people happy. Um, and, uh, 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 you know, it's a brilliant thing to go and see in a cinema. And I'm so proud to be part of it. Oh, why is it so relevant? Because we need something that brings everybody together and unifies everybody. It's a very divided world at the moment and a lot of unrest and a lot of unhappiness and this just spreads happiness and just on a very basic level if you can take that away 
when you come out of the movie and just spread it out into the world. Sound a little bit corny, but you will feel good after this movie. Um, so that's that's all you can do, you know. And and if that does a bit of that, then that's great. I think Mary Poppins is a quintessentially English character who is full of heart, but is very pragmatic. And, and oh, yes. although she's a, she's quite a tough nanny in a way, yes. she does it with love and she's very motivating. And I think people, people just took to that straight away. You know, I was, a, I was a kid when I saw it for the first time, I was four years old, and it just spoke to me, you know. My character is called Hamilton Gooding. He's a bit of a pompous idiot, lawyer. And um, he works for Colin Firth's character, Mr. Wilkins, and he's um, he's a bit of an uncaring kind of guy. You um, you sort of he puts a bit of a dark shadow over the the characters initially. How could I not <laughs> play a role in? Mary Poppins in the sequel. I mean, what a gift! What a gift! This is the perfect movie this Christmas just to lift you into Christmas and beyond into the new year. Okay, so I am here at the Royal Albert Hall for the London premiere of for the European premiere of Mary Poppins Returns, and I feel really good about it. I mean, everything is just so unrealistic and. Everything is just yeah. so weird and unrealistic and yeah. My name is George um, and I play the role of Georgie Banks. Uh, and basically, uh, he is uh, a little bit of a. I mean, I'm. Is it okay if I call him a ludicrous character because he is kind of loony because, in a sense, because he believes the stuff that is not true. For example, he sees a dolphin in a bathtub and he says, "Mother, father, I love mine. I saw there's a dolphin in the bathtub." What's a, what's a, what are you talking about? There's a dolphin in the bathtub, and that's kind of what well, he does. He, there's a nanny on a kite, there's a dolphin in the bathtub, there's a wolf driving a cat. Yeah, there's a man hanging from, on his ankle from a balloon. It was either Triple or Life Fantastic or Nowhere to Go But I Go. Thank you. This feels absolutely amazing. I was just walking up there and I was a bit nervous and thrilled and excited. And I, I can't quite believe the, the scale. <laughs> I play a lawyer called Fry um, uh, and he is uh, a nice guy doing a nasty job. Yeah, that's the best way to describe him. Beyond words, yeah, I was excited beyond words uh, to be um, included, to be asked to contribute to a project that's this important, this special and this magical is um, it's quite literally a dream come true. I think, I think uh, essentially it's about um, goodness and kindness but <clears throat> I think the, the thing that makes it special is it's adventure and it's magic and there's always time for adventure and magic. It was absolutely wonderful, as you can imagine. Getting to see, I'm, I'm a fan of actors as well as being one. I, I, I don't mind confessing to being starstruck when I see greats. Um, and watching them up close and personal and meeting them and seeing how they are off camera and how that translates to how they are on camera has been wonderful for me as a, as a not young but new actor. They're definitely going to be enchanted. Uh, yeah, they can expect to be um, charmed and inspired and um, uh, warmed. Well, listen, we spent one of the greatest years of our lives making this movie in London, so it feels wonderful to bring Mary Poppins home. Well, I think the Walt Disney Company did a really smart thing, which was they hired the biggest fan of the first movie to direct Mary Poppins Returns, and that's Rob Marshall. And I think in every frame of this movie is a love letter to the first one, and how what an incredible and classic film that is, and uh, I just think Rob knocked it out of the park. Sure. Uh, Jack is a lamplighter. He, uh, all we know about him is he apprenticed to Bert from the first film. Um, but that can mean anything because Bert had like 20 jobs in that first movie. He was a lamplighter, he painted watercolors, he played 12 instruments. Um, so what we really know about him is that he sort of knows that Mary's magic is real and he's up for the adventures. It 
was it was such a dream come true and uh, working on this movie and the cast is incredible but really uh, I'm here because Rob Marshall's making this movie and he he takes such good care of his actors he trusts them so much that you want to earn his trust in you and um, and he comes from the theater so we had so much rehearsal we became a company of actors and um, it was just a joy uh, I mean, I mean, I'm here because he cast Emily Blunt. I don't know that there's another uh, performer who could play that role in 2018. Uh, I, I think she's just extraordinary. Oh, Triple Little Light Fantastic was pretty joyous. It was one of the last numbers we filmed, the most athletic number by far, and it was about six months of rehearsal to get ready for it. So I just, um, I, I feel so grateful every time I watch it on screen. Well, I would do anything to work with Rob Marshall again. I hope he asks me again and again and again. I've worked with him on uh, Into the Woods. This was also Mark's film. And I just think that, um, you know, some people make working unnecessarily difficult, and Rob makes it a joy. He, he has sort of has a gift for delivering that. And we wanted to put out a joyful message in the world, which is what Mary Poppins Returns is. It's about light and possibility, and anything is possible. And it felt like a good time for the world to have Mary come back into their lives. And we all wanted to be part of it. They can expect uh, for children, to their, for their imaginations to be wide-eyed and, and broadened, and for grown-ups to rediscover the child in them. It's for it's for all the it's for the children in all of us this film. Oh, it's a romp and an adventure and visually it's a feast. It's just uh, uh, it's so wonderful. Oh, it's incredible experience. Um, to be here, this, this magical place. I mean I can't put it into words how I feel right now. Because she's like she inspires everyone to like keep your family going. She's a string that holds your family together and she just touches every member of your family right to, right to the end. Well, John Burke, he's a, he's a very fussy, organised boy who wants everything to be um, in order to make sure that every, everyone's alright with like, how the house is going. He just wants everything to be perfect. But when Mary Poppins comes along, and, like, she's his practically perfect nanny. He's like a little bit like, that's my room. Don't, don't do that. Like, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So, but then later on, he realizes that he needs to let it go just to have fun as a kid. My favorite day on set, the very, the very first day of meeting everybody, like seeing the cast, Lynn, Emily, Ben, <laughs> Dave Van Dyke, for example. I mean, that was just incredible. And everyone is just so talented as well. To be here at the premiere, it feels so incredible and surreal. Honestly, it's so strange because I was just at home just yesterday and now I'm here on the blue carpet of the European uh, premiere of Mary Poppins Returns. I think people love Mary Poppins because she's so iconic and she's quite funny because she's so stubborn all the time but then she can also be really really kind and really loving. My character is called Annabelle Banks, she is Michael Banks' daughter. Um, she's quite stubborn at first because their mother has recently passed away and she doesn't want Mary Poppins to take over because Annabelle thinks she's the mother role. So she doesn't want Mary Poppins to take over that. Um, she thinks it's quite special that she gets to be in charge and um, she's quite grown up so she feels like she doesn't need a nanny. But then as soon as she comes she realises that she needed her more than ever. So we did lots of auditions, there were seven auditions, um, and then Rob, the director, personally called me, um, and I started screaming, then I started running around the house, and I had a wooden spoon, um, using it as a microphone, which was pretty funny, but um, yeah. I know, this is, I can't quite take it in, it's... Very it's beautiful. Exciting. I mean, look at 72 Cherry Tree Lane is right there, John. It's only London can do. Beautiful. Because London is such a part of this movie. We just, it's our little love letter to London. It is, very much so. Well, John and I have a, um, a deal with Disney that we've had for a few years, and they've always been looking for projects for us. Uh, they knew of our interest in Mary Poppins, because we, I don't think we've ever made that a secret. But we never thought it was a real possibility to do a sequel because the rights were so famously protective and um, 
and the P.L. Travers estate was very protective of the material, which of course is understandable. But when the door opened, the little door opened, they came to us, and it was really, really, hello, handsome man. It's beautiful. So it was serendipity, really. Nice. They came Great to time. us at the right time, and, and they found the person, Rob, on Earth, they could attack this and can conduct this huge symphony. And with a great hand, he, he's just so amazing. He's so specific and he's so detail-oriented, but never lose sight of the whole, the whole meaning of the whole piece. Well, it was definitely a passion project on all our parts. It felt like something very deep inside of us because we love the first film so much, but we wanted to make sure that spirit of the first film was carried into this new story. I think it's a huge injection of joy and hope and wonder and childlike sensibility. Um, all things that adults need because we lose them as life progresses. And so um, for me, it's for children as well to experience this world on film again, but also to remind us all that Mary Poppins, which she brings from the sky, is, is very profound. I think we all need a little light and, and, and in the a, darkness. In a time when it is getting darker and, and we all could use that infusion, I think, yeah. in our lives. Well, they're perfect for the roles. I mean, there was no one else but Emily Blunt. She was the only one I could think of in a, you know, for this role. She's, she does everything. And Lynn manuel he has such a beautiful, authentic enthusiasm and childlike spirit that he brings to this role, which he has in life. So it was, they claim these roles for theirs, for their own. Well, I would say... Triple the Light Triple the Light, fantastic. That was the dance, a, that, the big dance. That was a number that we've always wanted to do, a big production number that we loved, and it was a big, sort of exciting, masculine, athletic number, something we've always wanted to the do. The most difficult as well, and that's always gratifying. Yeah, yeah, it's an eight attack something number. that's really scary, that's true. and then you feel, you know, happy with it. So. Yeah. How amazing was it to land a role in uh, Mary Poppins Returns? Um, as, as you know, this is my feature film debut. Um, this is the first time I've been on a red carpet. So to be here in London at the, at the European premiere for Mary Poppins Returns with a role, with a role in the film is, words, I don't even, words don't even do justice to describe how I feel right now inside. Um, it's about a million motions smooshed together and I just want to start dancing down the down the red carpet you know what I mean I'm that excited um yeah I don't know it's just crazy man it's absolutely crazy and I feel incredibly grateful I play the role of Angus uh, and he is a young excitable all dancing all smiling all singing Leary so a gas lamplighter um, and he's the sidekick of Jack who's played by Lin-Manuel Miranda what was it like working with Lin-Manuel Miranda um, I'm a huge fan he's He's a genius, he's the man behind In the Heights and Hamilton, two of, two of the biggest musicals of all time and two of my favorite musicals of all time. Um, so working with him was like, I felt like a dream. I was pinching myself every second and being like, wow, I'm really here exchanging dance moves and, and lines and singing. Um, it was an incredible feeling, absolutely magical. It was incredibly difficult because uh, it's, a, it's a 10 to 11 minute all male dance number. It's extremely athletic. We're jumping, flipping, spinning off these lampposts and then delivering dialogue in the middle and, and singing along. Sticks are on fire. We have a lot going on so it was incredibly hard. I think it's the love and the magic. Uh, at this time of the year especially, these are such two important things you know what I mean that everyone can do with more of in their lives. Um, so I think it's yeah, a beautiful film to come and see with the entire family. You can be young, older, any age. Um, and yeah, everyone can do with a little more love and magic. I think, as I was saying, talking about in the last question, I think it's that the magic she brings to, to everyone that she comes into touch with. So the Banks family in this film, um, and the, the love and the light she brings into the, everyone's lives who watch her on screen.